Hey Benji, uh, this is Pastor Dane coming to you today from the comfort of my man cave. Uh, this is a place I like to hang out in my house. Uh, it's raining outside, so I thought I'd invite you into this room where I have a lot of warm and fuzzy feelings, uh, especially as I think about the Minnesota Twins. Uh, brings back some good memories of watching a lot of those games with my grandparents, and my grandma happens to be a part of the sermon today, uh, and so I thought I would uh, hang out here as I record this sermon. Now, our reading from the Gospel of Luke. On that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing Jesus. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and of all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had so hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, and he blessed, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So I don't know if you are fully aware of this, but Easter is a really long season. It lasts 50 days all the way from Easter Sunday to the celebration of Pentecost, and this year that means it's from April 12th all the way until May 31st. And that means that we are just at about the halfway point of Easter right now. That's crazy, isn't it? We're only halfway through Easter? That seems like a crazy long time to keep a party going. But I wonder if the reason we need to keep this Easter party going that long is that it's hard to let it sink in, these crazy, audacious promises of Easter, especially with the world we are surrounded with. It's hard to put your finger on the way that the resurrected Jesus might show up and make a difference in your life now. And so maybe we need some extra time to think about all the little ways that Jesus is bringing those Easter promises into our lives and the ways that Jesus might just show up in everyday places so that we can be prepared to see him when he comes our way. This is what I was thinking about when I chose our story for today. It's a story that takes place on the very first Easter evening and it's one of many Easter appearances where the disciples encounter the living and resurrected Jesus. But this is one of my favorites because it feels so raw and real. These two disciples are walking along and Jesus suddenly appears right there by their side, walking with them on the road. But their eyes are kept from recognizing him. 
This whole seven-mile walk while they talk to Jesus and they share the story of how he died and rose, their eyes are kept from seeing him, even though he's staring them right in the face. And yet you get this sense that these disciples feel something peculiar and wonderful is happening in this encounter. When they get to the end of their walk and reach Emmaus, they want more, so they invite this man to stay with them in their home, and they sit down to a meal with him and break bread. And it's when he gives that bread to them that their eyes are opened. And just like that, Jesus disappears from their sight. These disciples get this glimpse of Jesus alive and well right there in their everyday lives, and then he quickly disappears from their sight but they can still feel their hearts burning within them and they can't contain their excitement that this resurrected Lord is alive and well and a part of their lives too. Now what's most interesting to me about this story is not what happened to those particular disciples, but how I can relate to it. You see, this is my experience of Jesus that when I get distracted and concerned by the troubles of the world, I don't always see Jesus right there by my side. But every so often, I do get these little glimpses of Jesus showing up. A friend of mine used to call them God winks. You know what I'm talking about, right? Those little moments where it's this tiny little feeling or sighting of God's presence in your life, as if God is winking at you, that little knowing wink, and then it disappears. But that's all you need, really, just a little glimpse that Jesus is there with you so that you can go about your daily life in the hope and promise that no matter what, Jesus will continue to walk with you down the road of life. Lately, I've had several of those moments. I find them all the time with my children. But this past week on May 1st, May Day, these random people from church dropped by and left us little May Day packages to let my family know that they've been thinking of us. These weren't extravagant gifts, but just a few flowers and some home-baked goodies and some candy for the kids. I know that these were little random acts of kindness from some neighbors, but I gotta be honest, I can't remember the last May Day where we received a May Day basket and we got three all in the same day. It was like God was sending us a little wink and letting us know that we were loved and cared for. My daughter even commented that the, she was feeling all this gratitude at the end of the day for God's gifts, and it wasn't just the three May Day baskets. She said those opened her eyes to seeing wonderful other gifts from God. Just like in our story, it was the briefest of moments that these friends took to drop by, and like that, they were gone. But it was like they were the presence of God for us, for just a little wink. Have you had one of those moments recently, even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of trying to figure out a new normal and deal with all the stress we've been dealing with? It's like God just shows up in those little ways, through a note from a friend, through a well-timed gift dropped off at your door, through a silly little saying. From one of your kids. It's like you can't put your finger on it, really, but you get this feeling through things as ordinary as these that Jesus is showing up in our lives. It's like you know for a split second he's there, and like that he's gone. Now sometimes this happens in the little ways like I've just described, but sometimes it happens in the bigger moments too. One example from my own life is the one that I'm thinking of today of my first week of seminary. To be honest, I was really struggling in that first week. I wasn't sure I was supposed to be there studying to be a pastor. I was kind of your average, just out of college student, a decent person, but with a lot of faults. And I thought I was going to seminary to be surrounded by a lot of goody two-shoes, monks and nuns who were better than me and I wouldn't fit in. The first week of seminary, my suspicions were partially confirmed. I met a few students who were that way. They were the kind of people who seemed to have it all together, and they seemed like they had never committed a sin in their life. Their idea of a swear word was, ah, shucks, shucky darns. 
and for fun, they would read children's books to each other on a Friday night. I don't know about you, but usually on a Friday night, I'd rather be found watching a Twins game. Well, I thought to myself, I didn't really know if I could act like that as a pastor, and I thought to myself, I don't think I want to be a pastor if I've got to be that good. And to top things off, I had moved from California to Minnesota, and I missed my friends, and I was feeling lonely and didn't exactly want to be friends with some of these people. Toward the end of that first week, we had this outing for new students where many of us students gathered at a local park, and we were asked to spend some time in prayer. In fact, we were invited to walk this prayer labyrinth that was there in the park. And as I was walking that labyrinth in prayer and thinking, I don't know if I'm supposed to be here, I was letting all these feelings wash over me and the self-doubt that I wasn't supposed to be there and the loneliness of my friends not being there and just wondering whether this was the right fit. And there was this weird feeling that came over me in that time of prayer. I feel silly saying it, but it was something very simple. This big maple leaf blew right on top of my foot. And when I saw that leaf, I immediately felt the presence of my grandma, you know, the one I used to watch all those twins games with in the summers. You see, she always used to send these maple leaves in the fall from Minnesota to me in Alaska growing up. And every time I see a maple leaf, I think of my grandma. And right then and there, all the doubts melted away. And it wasn't just grandma who was present with me, but God was there too, encouraging me. And I felt the beat of my own heart swelling within me. And I just knew that I was supposed to be here. To this day, it seems like a silly little thing. I wonder if this was God showing up in a maple leaf or just some leaf blowing across my path. It was just the briefest of moments, and then it was gone. But it's a moment I look back on, and when I remember it, I still feel my heart beating, and the goosebumps on my arm, and that feeling that God is with me, whatever challenges I face, walking with me so I know I'm never alone. So what about you? What are the moments in your recent past or moments from long ago where Jesus has shown up and given you a little wink and then like that, he's gone? Sometimes it would be nice to hold on to Jesus for a little while longer, invite him into our homes and have dinner with him and have him break bread in a real live way. But maybe it's better that we have little stories like these where Jesus just shows up for a second because then we can be reminded that Easter isn't just one day, but it's the unfolding story that keeps going and going, and we're only really halfway done with it. And then we feel our hearts burning within us from the last time we experienced Jesus showing up in our lives. And when we recognize it, we can know that he's always there and that he'll continue walking with us every step of the way.